Hi. My impression, and, and again, from my experience with power laws, is that uh, you have a winner-take-all effect in a power law domain. So one person has 50% of the wealth. That's the 80-20 rule. If you recurse it, you get 150 and and so on. And maybe we're close to that with super spreaders. Uh, if you look at Barabasi's work, it's a power law. Without going into the details or try to calibrate, it seems that uh, the impact of super spreaders is in that category. So in other words, uh, you just have to catch the super spreaders and, yeah, and you're pretty much uh, uh, safe. No? So uh, can you comment on that? Because I, we saw that paper that the uh, UK uh, geniuses were using uh, has a, uh, a, 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 what does it have, a gamma or exponential distribution? A gamma distribution, yeah. yeah something in the, uh, they have a distribution in the, uh, in pretty much uh, the uh, outside of sub exponential class. So in other words, it's, that it's an exponential the, distribution, basically. It cuts yeah, off it is. So it is not in, in the class where, where you have these effects. I mean, yeah. to simplify it to the general so, non-mathematical reader. Okay. So leaving, um, out, so leaving out tail events by not having a fat tail distribution is critical to real modeling of an outbreak uh, that includes the kind of dynamics that we're seeing here. And in particular, if you base an analysis of the outbreak on the earliest period of time, that's going to be before a super spreader event happens. And so you're misestimating the parameters because once there's a super spreader event, not only does that event happen, but increases the population, so increases the sampling of the tail. Okay, no, but there's so, another effect. Aside from the, the modeling uh, uh, thing, there's another effect, and it is that if you limit uh, social contact per person, it may not have a big impact on regular people, but it clips the tail of the super spreader. Right. So, so it is, so it is a yeah, cheaper I agree. Policy. It's really important to cut the tail. The problem is that this virus spreads so rapidly that it's not just the tail that creates this uh, rapid growth. So cutting the tail helps, but it's not enough. And that's why you have to do a lockdown because just cutting off, you know, sort of large events and, and, and socialites is, it is not going to make enough of a difference in order to stop it. It would make enough of a have, difference uh, okay. to slow it down. I, okay, I, I, I sort of disagree. I was saying that it's easier to just clip the, the, the that distribu part of the distribution. And, and of course, there's another fat tail of this and the parameters duration and stuff like that. Right, but you have to clip the distribution at about two, yeah, three. Yeah, but the effect, you underestimate the impact, impact can be huge. I no, mean, I'm, not, I, I'm not saying that it can't be huge but it's, you still have to cut it down below one. Yeah, of course, of course. But and, now, and, let me ask that's you. just not gonna happen, right? That's just not enough. So the point is that I, I definitely Hold agree on. that cutting off the tail, but for this kind of uh, distribution, there's enough weight okay. still in the one, two, three transmission uh, cases. Okay, we're short of time, so let's switch. Under one. Hmm? let's switch to the second point, that yeah. what makes you so positive that we can pretty much clean up uh, the whole thing in two to four weeks. So, I mean, it, it's really very straightforward. If you really isolate everybody in their homes, then, and you wait two weeks, two weeks is the incubation time, then you know everyone that's sick, basically. And so once you know everyone that's sick, you can isolate not only them, but their family members. But because their family members have been infected, it takes a little bit longer uh, in order to get the outbreak down to no cases because those people are infected. Uh, and there are also all kinds of random things. I mean, people, you know, people at the early at least had to get necessities and so on. So it takes a little bit longer, but basically it takes a couple of weeks plus. So I three, see. four weeks. Okay. And that's okay. what happened so, in China and that's what happened in South Korea. So you're optimistic. Basically, if you have a, a clear idea of, of what to do and about the, the real probability distribution of things, then you can you can definitely come up with uh, uh, good solutions. We, we just have one 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 uh, half a minute left. So very quickly, in, in two or three sentences, can you explain why these models, when you go from individual to aggregate, they miss something quite central, uh, and the, which is the past dependence, the, the, what we call the ergodicity. You call the ergodicity, I call it the past dependence. Can you no, quickly explain? They're both are correct, yeah. So the problem is that on the way up, you don't know who's infected. And so the dynamics are described by a certain set of equations. 
But on the way down, because you've isolated people, you know who's infected. So the same equations don't hold because you only have transmission within families. You don't have transmission to the public. And so, so the total framework of the equations has to change. Okay. That excellent. Okay, thanks a lot, Yanir, and, and let's do it again. And as you see this time, I've interrupted you less than last time. So I, hopefully the, the viewers will not be upset. Okay, thanks. Great, let's see. Right. And I'll ask you next time. Thanks, all right, ciao, ciao, bye. Ciao, ciao.